Hi. So, uh, welcome to a little bit surreal tea rock. Kitchen sink's broken. Uh, not really anything I can do about it, except, you know, uh, use a sink that's not broken. So, hi. I think I want to talk about prime numbers today because um, I have a friend who has been done wrong by mathematics quite a bit in their life. And uh, a side effect of this is when they ask me a math question like, why isn't one a prime number if prime numbers are numbers that are visible by themselves and one? I know I can't phone that in. I can't just go off the handle and be like, yep, there it goes. That's the answer. Because it needs to be intellectually satisfying to someone who won't take because mathematicians found it convenient as an answer. Why doesn't one count as a prime number? Well, it did for a bit. Um, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Like, there was a chunk of time in a chunk of the world where this prime number started with one. Um, but it didn't originally, and it doesn't now. And what I came up with in terms of explaining it, I mean, it does, in the end, come back to because mathematicians find it convenient. But the explanation that I found for why they might find it convenient goes all the way back to the beginning. Because the idea of prime numbers started, the idea came up in the context of a whole exercise about um, factoring. Uh, just going to explain for people who stumble over this video and don't know it. Uh, to factor a number is to find smaller numbers which you can multiply together to get that number. So 60, for example, 60 seconds in a minute or whatever, the reason why it's 60 seconds is because there's lots of ways you can divide that up. You can divide it into 5 chunks of 12 seconds. You can divide it into 12 chunks of 5 seconds. You can divide it into 3 chunks of 20 seconds. It's you got options. So Back in ancient Greek times, people were playing with um, factoring numbers. Oh, was it ancient Greek times? Doesn't even matter. Point is, someone noticed, hey, so if I factor a number and then factor those factors and just keep going, at some point, I'm going to hit a pile of numbers that I can't shrink down any further. And it always ends up being the exact same numbers every time. So for 60, I talked about 5 times 12 as a way to break up 60. Well, you can't break up 5. But you can break up 12. Uh, 12 is 6 times 2, or it's 3 times 4. And 6 times 2 is 3 times 2 times 2. And 3 times 4 is 3 times 2 times 2.
Um, so, um, in both cases, you end up with two squared, three, and five. Um, but 60 is also, uh, 3 times 20. Well, 20 is 5 times 4, which is 5 times 2 times 2. So you still end up with two twos, a 3, and a 5. Um, and that goes however you divide it up. If you want to do 2 times 30 and keep going down that chain, you end up with, uh, two twos, a 3, and a 5. So, that's cool. And the thing about that is, why would you divide by one? Like, serious question, if you're factoring a number, if you're trying to make, break down a number into smaller numbers, one won't do. It's useless. It doesn't do anything. You can't break down, like, 60 divided by 1 is 60. You haven't gotten anywhere. So it, it almost doesn't even count. I mean, people talk about it being the multiplicative identity, and this is part of that, is one, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything, because multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything. But in terms of prime numbers, like, one of the foundational purposes of prime numbers was to one of the foundational purposes of prime numbers was to turn um, was this feature of being able to shrink big numbers down to the same set of smaller numbers those smaller numbers that we shrunk them down to, the ones that you couldn't shrink down any further, are the prime numbers. And you don't include 1 in that set, because 1 doesn't do anything when you're factoring. You don't include 1, I mean, you include 1 if you're making a list of all the factors. But if you're trying to calculate what factors exist, you just write down 1 at the beginning of the problem and stop thinking about it. Because it's always going to be there if you're talking about integers. I don't know what people do when they're talking about factors of rational numbers or real numbers. Oh my goodness, I have no idea what you do there. But, for, for integers, it's, one doesn't matter. One isn't useful, one isn't interesting, one isn't part of the picture. And it turns out, that goes for a lot of other things, too. If you try to use the definition of prime number that includes 1, you just keep having to put that exception in there. It's like, all the prime numbers except 1, all the prime numbers except 1, all the prime numbers except 1. Because it just doesn't act like a prime number. The other prime numbers have a lot of properties that 1 just can't bring to the table. So... Like, starting all the way back at the very first reason that we were looking at prime numbers at all, there's not a reason to look at 1. And, uh, yeah. So that's what I told my friend. And they were like, oh, that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and start fading this stuff back out of the bathroom.